So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Future Hour. And today we're so so happy and so so lucky. And after all the ups and downs, finally, so lucky to have Christina Cornered to be on the podcast. And she is the acting editor in chief at Coin Telegraph. And、uh, Coin Telegraph, personally for me, really makes one of the best, informative, easy to understand, and give. The more updates on the crypto world. Personally, I really enjoy reading your articles and the whole company's article. They really aim to deliver accurate news from both the centralized and decentralized world on a daily basis. And、uh, I know you're working on a bunch of things, such as currently building an editorial strategy and ensuring content quality for a leading global media outlet, which is Coin Telegraph. And、uh, so, thank you so much for being on this podcast today.、Um, thank you, yeah, Tazi, thank you for, for the, the invite. Invite. Thank you very much for this nice introduction. Happy to be here. Hi, everyone. Amazing, amazing. And、uh, just for for、uh, because there are a decent amount of audiences that they maybe don't know the crypto world or the blockchain world that much. So, by the way, Coin Telegraph is super, super big. They have、uh, roughly. Um, ten point seven million visits each month. Um, that's the you know, very um, how to say, conservative um, data. So uh, they are big and they are impacting the industry. So I want to begin the podcast with um. Is there anything you would like to mention? For example, call to action to our audience, like、uh, something you are working on at the moment. Maybe something for them to check it out or um. Things along the line. Well, thank you, Jazzy. We are always trying to be on top of things、um, in everything related to blockchain and crypto. So、uh, we are never sleeping, and it's twenty four per seven. And、uh, I would like to mention that it's not only、uh, the global version in English, but also our regional version. So、yes. uh, for all who prefer, for those who prefer to read local content、uh, translated into Spanish, Portuguese, Italian. Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Arabic,、right. German, Turkish.、Uh, you are very welcome to to explore our website. Yes, all the listeners out there, or if you're watching from YouTube, pause and go check it out right now. And、uh, <laughs> so awesome! Could you tell us a little bit as、um, you holding this position? And it's absolutely beautiful. Acting editor in chief, what are you building within the organization?、Uh, well, as the role uh, name um, says, it's actually more or less everything. So I'm trying to ensure that all our wonderful team、uh, has everything that they need in order to produce、uh, the best content in the market. Um, so it's it's always about people, and I'm really passionate about people.、Um, I'm really happy to be here because Jazzy, I saw that you are、uh, also a very passionate person, and、uh, I think that where we met, where you met me for the first time,、uh, it was a mentorship panel for、uh, those who would like to join the blockchain space.、Um, I consider it very important also in、uh, my current role. Role to not only mentor the team but also those people who would like to be initiated to the space, and、um, my in my hands the opportunities to produce educational content、uh, to give people、um, more accessible information about blockchain space, but also to organize different events that can help new people、um, get. Acquainted with the space and、uh, become less afraid of joining this new adventure. Yes, there are、uh, a few things there.、Um, I would like to mention. You, usually, after the first question, the second question is like, "Who are you building、uh, this for?" Which,、uh, from your answer, is like you are really motivated to get more people. In the space, and also help and encourage and be there for the people who want to、uh, get into the space, right? And also, you mentioned there are a bunch of、uh, events that、um, you are building or you're planning. Could you tell us something about that? And especially, not only the online event, but maybe you'll have anything planned for the offline for the summer or for next year, something like that. Well, definitely, we are 
hoping that a real in-person events will be back very soon. I'm personally, I haven't participated in any in-person event for over a year. Uh, right. Then I had a chance to go to Dubai for a conference um, and it was an incredible experience. Uh, in the meantime, we are organizing different online panels and discussions. I'm also quite active in the in the female related uh, association. So I'm part of different networks and there are a lot of interesting events happening on that front. Uh, and then of course we are all looking forward. I'm, I already been invited to some uh, conferences after this uh, summer. I hope that everything nice. will be back to normal. Uh, and also yeah. during summer, there are some very cool crypto retreat destinations that are organizing mm. sort of uh, uh, retreat slash conference. Uh, with Can you tell us maybe one or two about the crypto retreat? Well, I haven't been to any yet. Uh, yeah. But for example, I have a friend uh, who is organizing one in uh, in Mykonos on the Mykonos Island. And I was invited uh, to speak there in, in uh, September. Uh, nice. And, uh, I might be there, huh? I might be there. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Uh, and awesome. I think that's a great, actually, a great um, yeah. opportunity um, to work at the same time to, um, well, to relax a bit and uh, to get inspired. I think uh, what we all have experienced uh, since the beginning of the pandemic um, right. is that it's really difficult to keep being creative. Uh, while you are working from home and you you can't meet your colleagues and partners and friends, so it's really important to create these opportunities uh, to wake up uh, your create your internal creativity. Um, right. Yeah, absolutely. So, dissect just a little bit. You mentioned uh, brought up like the pandemic period, right? And Personally, for me, definitely, I'm extremely passionate about the things I enjoy doing. I'm very curious. I'm very extrovert. And however, I do feel that pandemic has made me, change me a little bit into the more extra, uh, introverted sometimes. So did pandemic change you in some way? And so that's the first part. And also, how did you go through or survive the pandemic? And yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a very important question. And um, I definitely felt it myself uh, and also in my team uh, right. that it was at some points really difficult to um, to find this, you know, positivity within. Um, yeah. But I think what is important is that this uh, awful thing actually has gathered us all together. Uh, right. And Absolutely. at some point, I think it made us a little bit more human. Um, right. Because, well, there is nothing, nothing more important than um, our friends and family being safe and healthy. And right. everyone um, had something to, to share about the situation in their countries, in their environments. Um, so I think what is really important during such periods uh, for any manager is to listen to the people with whom he or she works. Um, yes. And for the rest of, uh, well, for the rest of your communication in your life, I think it's really important to, even though we all only have this opportunity to communicate through the screen, um, right. I think it's really important to give something and to take something in return in terms of emotions, positive emotions and energy. Right. Absolutely. So uh, this is just personally, I'm definitely curious. So uh, as does an editor in chief is similar, very, very similar to what a CEO does within an organization uh, so for no. a media company? No. So basically or... we also have a CEO. Okay. Okay. And uh, normally a media organization has editor in chief. Yes. And a managing editor. I have been a managing okay. editor for several years. And uh, now that our former editor-in-chief left, uh, so I stepped in as acting editor-in-chief. Uh, what does it mean? It basically Amazing. means that if CEO is more 
responsible for, uh, well, for the, let's put it, financial uh, situation within the company. Right. Uh, yes. uh, the person ensures that the editorial also ha- gets all the um, necessary uh, resources, but also uh, that the editorial team is not only creating some content without thinking about uh, uh, potential revenue, because, well, we have to be sustainable. And of course, uh, right. as we do not have any grant from, I don't know, governments or companies. So yes. this is something yes. that we need to always keep in mind. But this is CEO's job. Editor-in-chief ensures yeah. the... Um, the overall editorial politics uh, policy within the right. within the media outlet, uh, and also ensures that uh, all the team, um, as a manager, ensures that all the team has this opportunity to develop yes. their talents and to find right. uh, what they are best at, and of course feel motivated and um, happy with the job they are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like. The two aspects. One aspect is the media, the editorial stuff. Uh, also, the other aspect is the working with people as a manager, as a leader, right? And uh, that's very beautiful. And which leads to my next question: What um, kind of future are you looking forward to build with the resources you have, with the um, responsibility you have at the moment? <laughs> Thank you for the question. Well, I'm I'm not having illusion, an illusion that I don't know I can like really change the world for everyone, uh, but I'm definitely. Maybe you can. Who knows? <laughs> there's a lot of people on. There's like you know ten point at least on the English website only ten point seven million uh, well, visits I think per month. That yeah. I prefer you know not to generalize, but I think that um, good things are usually small things. So whenever I can right. make a difference, even with one person. That's important right. for me. Absolutely. Uh, and this may uh, imply um, some collaboration within the team and right. how um, am I impacting career path of uh, my colleagues. Right. But also, of course, if someone, uh, I don't know, gets inspired by my path and decides to join the space or just gets more educated because of our content and get some new opportunities in terms of uh, financial freedom or new uh, directions of their businesses or um, or something that makes difference. And here I'm also talking about charity and sustainable development right. projects, everything that can um, enable uh, different responsible um, values uh, implemented into our economy related to climate change issues, to um, distribution of wealth, political transparency, and elections, uh, trust in elections. Um, these all are things that, uh, in my opinion, are very important. Yes, absolutely. Um then I'm curious because you wrote and had this amazing interview um, with someone from TechCrunch in 2018, which is media's role in blockchain and crypto. And what from 2018 till now, <laughs> <laughs> so much things has changed, you know. Um, so what in your perspective, what has changed since yeah, I remember that interview. It was actually January 2018. It was Davos World Economic Forum. Yes, it was my January 31st. Booster. That's when the article <laughs> posted. I saw. Yeah. I saw. Awesome. Yeah, it was Mike Booth. Amazing article, by the large. way. Thank you very much, editor at large uh, in TechCrunch. And at that point, right. I was a bit new to the space, and uh, uh, it's true that now I can have this perspective, maybe um, toward this three years that three right yes three years that passed mm. even mm-hmm. more already three and a half yes well yeah. our our mission initially was to bring quality journalism into the space because definitely there were right. uh big trusted respected uh media organizations uh in um, in financial content like uh, i don't know bloomberg and uh um 
the economist and business insider um right but the crypto space was very new and young and uh, it was really yes. difficult to find people who understand the space and can write about it or can write right. and understand the space so it was usually uh one of yes not as right it's like you only get one of them of course yeah and um yeah and now the situation completely changed we will have some wonderful colleagues uh, who maybe just joined the space in 2018, actually, or right. joined the space before, but uh, started writing in 2018 and now already have right. um, the incredible portfolios. Um, me too, I will. I would say, well, I joined the space in 2017 and uh, right. uh, it was very adventurous for me a new one yeah. now it's part of my life but uh yeah. even if i remember that world economic forum in davos in 2018 uh right. the blockchain was a very marginal thing even though everyone yes. was talking about blockchain it was the first time ever at the WEF that everybody right. was talking about blockchain but, but everybody there when they were talking about blockchain at the time they were like super cautious about yeah that, so true maybe, yes exactly right? exactly yeah jazzy yeah, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, crypto was the most risky part of blockchain yeah so uh, whoever used the word blockchain in the official program of the world economic forum didn't use uh the word crypto because it was considered really marginal yeah and we yeah, organized absolutely. some outside events uh outside of the main program agenda yes. um now everything has changed we uh, right. are very honored to have partnership with the world economic forum's strategic platform uh, Amazing. where um they aggregate news from all over the world about different right. um, technologies. And we are uh, one of the very few sources they use uh, for blockchain and crypto related uh, content. Amazing. And two things. I would like to, to maybe tell us a little bit about your journey into the blockchain space. Like maybe something like, when did you first um, hear about it and what made you, you know, because I, I talked to Maria um, last week and she was saying that most of us, or maybe all of us at the beginning all have this refusal uh, phase, right? And hmm. first time you heard about it until we actually decided to learn more and until you decided to start your career in this space, maybe you could tell us something a little, a little bit about that. Well, that's a very interesting question. I think everyone has uh, different paths here. Nice. I personally, I was I was working in innovative businesses, uh, events and journalism related to other types of innovations. I was working in right. urban uh, policies, green technologies, energy sector a lot. So more traditional business, I would say. Uh, and at some point, uh, getting acquainted with crypto was a logical step. Uh, but at the same time, um, yes. it was so new and young as a space. Uh, I was a bit overwhelmed by the yeah. fact that um, all the uh, I don't know founders and CEOs of companies in uh, crypto and blockchain were available. Um, right. If you compare with the traditional businesses like energy companies and big corporations, it's definitely uh, available in what sense? Like, like if you're a journalist or, or even just if you're working in the space, you basically right. usually have to deal with the founders and CEOs. Well, now already right. we have big companies within the crypto space who have uh, over 100 employees. And of course, you're not yes. uh, communicated direct to, directly with the founder. But it wasn't the case for four years ago. Not at all. Yes. Uh, it was a very small community. And that Absolutely. was pretty exciting. I I wouldn't say that I had a refusal uh, state, but but um, it definitely seemed something very new and adventurous. And I didn't, I couldn't imagine it would become my life, you know. Yeah. So and was, this was let's pinpoint the time. And this was 2016 or 2015 or 17. No, I was quite late. Even though now I think I can consider myself a veteran in this space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, it's 
It's about how fast you learn, or you know, even even for today, someone still said that today is still compared to year two thousand for internet for the blockchain space. So, yeah, yeah. and it was completely <laughs> marginal at that point. Like, well, maybe right. Bitcoin was something that you could could would have heard yeah. of, yeah, but like all the rest, it was just impossible that you could encounter a person who knows anything about the space. It was all very right. new. Um, and that's why it was so exciting to actually delve into. Right. And so the curiosity, the excitement, and and for me personally, and for me, this is one of the biggest thing, which is the the access, the open-mindedness that we have within the community, right? It's like we all are on this network and we all have certain beliefs. And someone even said that uh, blockchain technology, especially with Bitcoin, is a technology or a network with an ideology embedded in it or behind it, right? Um, so, Christina, I'm curious, what made you uh, join Coin Telegraph in uh, 2017? Well, Jazzy, it actually was a coincidence. I mean, my former oh my colleague with one of publications uh, that I worked yeah. before uh, was at that moment working in uh, Coin Telegraph, and uh, he asked okay. me uh, whether I know someone who would like to join, uh, maybe in you know in in a part time mode uh, to help him with editing. Uh, nice. We didn't have back then a big team as we have yeah. now. And uh, yeah. I was writing my thesis here in Italy at that moment. And um, uh, I was, uh, let's say, in a, in a mode when I didn't have a full-time job and I had different projects. And uh, I thought that it's a great opportunity to learn um, something new. And Cointelegraph opened the right. opportunity with crypto and blockchain. Uh, and then I just got involved into the space and uh, it revealed to be such an interesting place to work that in, yeah. I think in a month I started working full-time and then this full-time um, f- found out to be uh, 24-7. <laughs> so here is the thing. But uh, I think what is incredible in the in the space, as you said, this open-mindedness and the fact that people are really a lot of people in the space really want to make difference and want to change the future. And when you work here in the crypto space, and I think that it won't be the same, uh, I don't know, in five years maybe, because, well, uh, blockchain is becoming mainstream. But for the moment, it's all very visionary. Like you can't actually progress in the industry if you don't put targets that are maybe in the beginning seem to be impossible to reach. Absolutely, right. And this just reminds me of one one of these quotes that Steve Jobs said, you know, what you just mentioned. It's like those people who are crazy enough to believe that they could change the world are the people who actually do. So, um, and that is something beautiful. Maybe... Obviously, you know, as we mentioned at the beginning, maybe not everybody all actually make that happen, but a lot of people are trying, are moving towards that direction. And it's inevitable that all those people build up this momentum that will and are and will be uh, inspired more and more people, right? So, uh, and that leads me to my next question. So the media obviously, you know, plays such a big part when it comes to the present and the future about uh, blockchain and, and cryptocurrency. So, and then there's someone said that the media program people just like how the coding language program computers, right? Because the media and uh, films and all this kind of thing, right? Really put idea into people's head. So where do you see um, like the future of media is going or do you have a vision for that? That's a very complex and interesting question. Thank you, Jazzy. Um, I think that media is getting diversified as your economic portfolio, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Amazing. people are um, using different sources and uh, mm -hmm. different modes of um, digesting the content. Um, Absolutely. There are opportunities for everyone, for those who like news and headlines and uh, you know, social media short posts or those who prefer right. to delve into some specific problematics and uh, read in-depth articles. There are podcasts, um, right. there are uh, YouTube videos, interviews, whatever. Uh, so I think we won't see any more this monopolies of topics in the media business where big giant media corporation are controlling um, all the coverage over certain topics. Of course, we, we still have this situation and um, on the national level especially, uh, of course, there are respected publications and I really wish them um, all the best to keep going because I think it's very important that we have this tradition of quality journalism yes but at the same time a lot of small medias appear and i think it's very fair that anyone in the world can have access uh to whichever resource he or she wants to um to 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 learn about um i think that the biggest problem in the media business uh, is definitely centralized control. And in some countries, unfortunately, we see that um, media uh, is getting more under pressure by the governments. Yes. And uh, what happened this week with the uh, journalist that, who had uh, been taken and arrested in Belarus uh, after the flight from... Uh, uh, from the south of Europe to uh, Vilnius in Lithuania right. was Lithuania. was taken yeah, exactly. by Lithuania. the Russian authorities uh, under some bomb. And something like that had been going on for a while, right? They they have, I think, was it last year? They have, or this year, they have the holding hands as like, you know, the human wall thing talking about, you know, like, Human rights and yeah, of, yes, well, it's I'm, very important now in Belarus, and uh, yes. really, my thoughts are with uh, with this country and with all the independent journalists who are unfortunately now suffer suffering uh, from uh, pressures, governmental pressures. Um, it's it's really yeah. very sad that in our modern life we still have this situation where a journalist can feel uh, secure even outside his own country. Uh, which he left because of some political issues. Um, right. So I think this these are some important issues that we still need to solve. And I Absolutely. hope that blockchain partly could contribute to solving these issues. So, Christina, is there any way we could decentralize media? Well, from your perspective, in some regard, it's already decentralized. Like, for example, look yeah. at us, Coin Telegraph. We have uh, right. over sixty uh, people working for uh, for the editorial, and uh, all of them are based in different countries all over the world. Uh, we are working remotely. Uh, yes. Everyone has uh, his own citizenship and national uh, identification, but at the same time, right. we are building something together. Uh, yes. In our case, we have this uh, luck of not being dependent on any government um, or uh, local uh, conditions because, well, we have offices all around the world. Of course, well, from the legal perspective, uh, we always need to... Uh, be aware of the place where we are based, the same uh, yes. concerns, taxes, etc., and uh, economic situation. Absolutely. But as a as a group producing content, uh, we are very decentralized, and this is an incredible gift that we have. Because uh, I will be honest with you, like okay, I am quite a cosmopolitan person. But still, I haven't yeah. lived everywhere. Uh, right. So it's very important that sometimes I have my own assumption 
And then my colleague who is based in, uh, I don't know, in some Asian country or in a Latin American country tells me that actually my assumption is wrong uh, because still we are tending to perceive the world around us through our own perspective or in case of, uh, I don't know, high tech uh, businesses, uh, we have this tendency to look at the world through the American prism, Western culture prism. Yeah. Yes. And it's not that it's not right, but it's very reductive because the world is too yeah. big. Then if you do it like that, you only see this much and, and you're missing yeah, you're all right. the, like exactly like behind you the map, right? You only see yes. from, yeah, exactly. So that's mm. very important uh, while you're a journalist, always to have this vision open and your ears ready to he- to listen to other stories. And it's also not only about English. In the end, it's really important yeah. um, to discover other cultures through other languages because English, not all that is happening in the world is happening in English. We exactly. definitely should uh, be aware of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, English and, you know, I, obviously you speak like I don't know, eight to nine languages and I only speak like... Chinese, English, and a little bit Spanish, un poco español. But more <laughs> languages I learn, I realize there are just bridges for us to be able to communicate and understand each other, right? And and the travel and perspective, having friends over the world really play a big part into that as well. So where I'm going next is that how to start a career in uh, blockchain technology, because I'm sure that you work and meet with so many, uh, many, many people in the blockchain space, right? Do you have any advice for the young people or for minorities to uh, like to get into the space? Sure. Thank you for this question. And uh, I think the diversity and inclusion is actually very important uh, for every industry. Um but uh, maybe for emerging industries, it's even more important because we are only constructing what we will see uh, implemented right. um, in the future. So it's very important that we have from the beginning Absolutely. different visions involved into this um, industry. Uh, well, I would say that definitely there are a lot of opportunities that uh, you just need to be either lucky or also you know persistent to find. Um, right. There are different portals. Also, for, for example, Coin Telegraph has a jobs page uh, where we publish some of uh, industries' um, job postings. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely, education is very important, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't only recommend you uh, to read Coin Telegraph because there are so many other wonderful um, sources. And it's not only about media; it's also about right. books and. Um, yeah some researches and uh, analysis. I think it's also very important to talk to people who are in the space. Uh, oh. And Do you talk to Coindesk? You all cool? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, I respect them a lot. I'm joking. I'm joking. No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, they're they are doing a great job. And uh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it would be weird to be the only one in the space, you know, the only media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's more- like kind of def- defeat the purpose of all people get into the blockchain in the first place, right? It's like where uh, Maria, uh, the guest from last week, she was saying that it's very much so. It's like she even very careful and don't use that much of the word competitor because everyone is doing their own thing. Everyone is solving their own pain points. Other people in the uh, in on this planet that also have this uh, struggle before. Yeah, which but is also more amazing. companies that are uh, in the world who are dealing with the same issues that we are yes. does mean more... The, the more blockchain becomes mainstream, more people are working in the space and more new people get involved. Uh, so yes. I'm, I'm, I'm personally, uh, personally uh, supporting every new initiative in the space. Um, right. And I think that it's very important that you find your own uh, favorite source or role models. Right. Uh, yeah. There are some wonderful men and women um, and it may be- Who is your role model, Christina? Please tell us. Oh, la la. Well, for example, yes. I'm, uh, 
I'm fascinated by Sheila Warren, who is head of blockchain and decentralized ledger in uh, right. the World Economic Forum. Uh, you did an interview with her, right? Yes, uh, I had a chance yes. to interview her several times. Uh, and uh, she's not only uh, an incredible professional, highly expert, um, high expert in the field, but she's also mother of three. And uh, right. I think that's, that's very important that um, even being passionate about something that you are work on, you still have a lot of other things in your life right. that at some point give you this, you know, uh, pause and relax, but at the same time right. that actually enrich your experience within your job um, environment right. because more you meet people maybe from outside your space, um, the more you understand about other visions around you absolutely absolutely right like you understand just gain so much more perspective and this like chinese or indian philosophy they're talking about um balance and talking about it's not this or that is this and that it's not work or life you have to pick one and that's all the old thinking and it's, it's like now it's this and that all we, we can do both especially with the help of uh technology so christina Advice on working with media, for example, a project or a company would like to get featured. Um, I'm super curious about that. Well, thank you. That's a very tricky question because, well, uh, definitely right. there are some, uh, you know, practices, good practices, but at the same time, it's also sometimes right. a coincidence. I'm personally, uh, even though yes. I'm very much interested in, in projects and technology behind those projects, but it's people who inspire me the most. And definitely, I'm personally, uh, I prefer, you know, to learn more about the person behind the project rather than mm. reading about the project because, well, right. you feel this energy of the person. You, you maybe ask yes. the person something that is not related to his project, but it actually will give you an opportunity to learn more Absolutely. about the project uh, through this yes. uh, question. Uh, so I uh, definitely um, would recommend to uh, try to establish this relationship with the media, not through some uh, only through uh, official channels, but also some personal relationship just because um, sometimes it's it gives you a new perspective on what you're doing when you it's just so much more than just a transaction right yeah. like i do something for so you so true for yes. me but it's but we're all human beings at the end of the day of course uh otherwise well some practical tips well i think that um every journalist is a bit overwhelmed uh through the day with different pitches so uh sure. whenever you can make it concise concrete up to the point without this additional uh, epithets like uh, this is the right. biggest event in the space uh, right. uh, for the last uh, 12 months um, yes. it it would help and it definitely would create more trust into what you are doing yes and i bet personally i imagine if someone said oh this is the biggest da 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 this is the next you know ethereum or bitcoin or whatever right i almost i imagine it will almost make you that like i don't want to read this you know like right maybe a little bit because it's well it also depends so I mean, overplayed uh, maybe you are in a very good mood and you have uh, some free time and you open first 10 yeah. Uh, emails that you get on in your email box and read all the letters that you yeah. get and then you get uh, tired or you have some other thing yeah. to do. And yeah, yeah, the yeah. rest that maybe are even better uh, press releases are left uh, without your attention. I mean, that also can happen. Uh, it's not always Absolutely. the case, but it can. Yeah. So just now you just mentioned uh, the perfect time of the pivoting, pivot, pivot point of uh, this conversation. <laughs> uh, some personal questions to get to know you more so uh our dear christina as um maybe tell us something about your hobbies you know what are your favorite hobbies you know 
Thank you, yeah. Dazi. Well, I have actually a lot of hobbies. I think more than I can permit myself <laughs> with the current job. Um, right. I- I'm a dancer and I adore dancing. And uh, uh, actually during the pandemic, I launched a digital platform for dancing. Um, so this is something that inspires me a lot. And uh, this right. is my kind of um, mindful meditation. Um, uh Absolutely. I'm also playing piano and singing. Um, wow. So this is another type of uh, personal meditation for me, you know, to right. just turn off right. everything um, yes. related to the uh, daily life yeah. and um, yeah. just listen to the sounds of music. I adore reading. Um, I adore theater and uh, cinema. Um mm-hmm. And and I adore traveling. Yeah. Uh, so I miss very much uh, the open borders and. Uh, I know, I know. Yeah, but currently you're based in Italy, right? Yes, I'm based in so, near Venice. So I'm ah, okay. very lucky to have some wonderful destinations around. Oh my god! Um, Amazing. Yeah. Well. I'm currently in Madrid, you know, let me know if you come to Madrid. Here is a um, lot of um, fun stuff going on. Um, the weather is amazing <laughs> and the food, the tapas here is amazing. Although I personally, I have prefer, I prefer um, Italian food. I spent two of my birthday in Italy and oh, well, uh, maybe exactly. I might, and, and uh, I went years ago, uh, which is funny, the first summer or the first time I ever heard about the Bitcoin pizza story I was actually I was doing a, a leadership program in Rome oh, yeah. and spent my birthday there um on that day we had this kind of uh, retreat before the program say we got on the bus and took us out maybe an hour outside of Rome and there's this this um family they're farming they're growing their own grapes and making their own wine the food was so good and that was the first first time in my entire life heard about a bottle of wine could be three four euros i was like this is not italian but i was like vamos please like let's go <laughs> and, yeah, and, and, and well, yeah well if you have- yeah and then last summer i was in uh, milan for my birthday so but this summer i might go back uh where i might you know um go to i don't know uh napoli or something um but yeah there's it's, it's so beautiful well let me know if you happen to be here it will be it will be great to meet you uh and i oh think God. you will like venice a lot yes which is so funny i was gonna go so last summer i did uh I knew it. I was going to go to Milan. I was flying out from Rome. But I, at that time, people were saying that, you know, last summer with the situation, right? People were saying, oh, you must go to Venice. You must go to Florence because now there's nobody. So I was like, decided at the end, I went to Florence. Um, just took a like trip there. And I remember like at Duomo in Florence and on that square that used to be just a scene photo full of people is like literally nobody. And... So that was absolutely amazing. I could buy tickets and go to see the tower, the bell tower. Uh, so beautiful and full of stories. And literally, I could buy the ticket a day ahead of time. I went walking around in Rome at like 9 p.m. in the evening. I was like, nobody. So I really got to see a different side. But um, I'm looking forward to come back, definitely. I'm going to let you know if I'm being in Venice. Yes, you're very welcome. Yeah. Um, so earlier you were saying oh by the way do you have i saw you are a cat lover do you have cats oh yes i'm a very big cat lover yes i have a cat uh who is somewhere in the garden now uh yes he is my uh secret personal assistant uh Ah, sometimes he's just typing messages and sending them all Ah. over and then i I have to apologize for some (laughs) unreadable uh stuff that he sends out that's funny so and also earlier mentioned um sheila warren and she had her career and she had her family so just curious are you married do you have kids or do you, are you planning to have kids or you know <laughs> thank you jazzy I, I appreciate your question uh yes i am married to a wonderful Amazing. uh person um he's italian uh and yes. we don't have yet kids but uh it's definitely in our plans at some point we'll see how it goes um cool yeah and 
I, I also asked Maria this question as well, right? Because, you know, this podcast, a free flow conversation, right? Do you have um, any advice or the biggest lesson from、uh, maintaining a healthy and beautiful romantic relationship? <laughs> ah, well, you know what I definitely tried to train myself this year when、yes. we are stuck at home, we are working from home. And it's very difficult to separate, you know, professional life and personal life. It's、right. really important to just make a pause and just dedicate at least one minute, you know, to the person,、uh, and、yeah. it will change everything.、Uh, so、right. being、uh, listening to the person with whom you live、uh, and sharing your experiences when you are. One hundred percent into the moment, so you are mindful、uh, of、yeah. this current communication with your partner. I think this is very、right. important, and this is very challenging when our work is happening in our phones, and、uh, right. you have like always this temptation to check your messages, etc. So、yes. you always have to find、uh, at least several minutes. When you just turn off your phone and you dedicate、um, your attention to the person who you love. Yes, absolutely. So being present and communication,、um, and maybe even set up time to like not checking email, not checking the phone. Even you use so much of those kind of devices to help you to do the work, right? And personally, for me, I've been practicing meditation since twenty seventeen and、uh, yoga as well. Just by focusing on the breathing process, that really helps me be present as well. So that, like, it's it's very interesting, right? When you meditate, is you can like kind of take a step back and you can see that this is who I think I am, but this is like you have there's、uh, this, someone's observing, and you can know and generally just it's not something people tell me, but you generally just know yourself that. There is more than who you think you are, and、uh, and it, it just it just interesting interesting thought interesting thought to have an interesting thought or knowledge to live with as well. And For sure. How much time do you meditate per day or per week? I do lately、uh, things a slightly hectic, but I still manage to do like twenty minutes in the morning and a few minutes、uh, in the evening. But when I have a bit more time, I will maybe sit down like in one hour in sitting.、Um, and awesome. And、uh, yeah, but for me, it's not like sitting down one hour. I don't move at all. But it's like maybe after thirty minutes, my legs are numb. You know, like my back hurts. But、um, but I still manage to because people say that when you are feeling those sensations. That means actually you are doing it right of meditation. So、um, I know you you like your for your music and writing and、um, piano or even singing is your meditation. But do you practice? Just curious, meditation or yoga, things like that. <coughs> Sorry.、Uh, well, I actually started doing some yoga、uh, last year、uh, with the wonderful Chilean、uh, teacher. So this is what、uh, happened when we got、uh, stuck at home,、uh, right. but our practices became decentralized. So I started joining different、uh, practices and di- from different countries.、Um, I like it a lot. I just、um, unfortunately, and I I know that maybe it's not、uh, correct to say I, I I can't find time. It's not because I don't have time, but because I don't make、uh, enough efforts to find、uh, this time.、Right. But Um, right. I also think that it's important, you know, to be mindful in some、um, small moments in your life. I、yes. don't know where when you are taking shower, and you just concentrate on the feeling of the water that is falling on your skin. Yes. Or when you are eating,、exactly. it's very important not to think about one、uh, hundred stresses you have uh, uh,、right. in your mind, but to concentrate、right. on、uh, on the. Sensations uh, and yeah. tastes, uh, and the same with drinking.、Uh, so I think、right. uh, it's very important, even if you don't find time for real med- meditation. Even though I admire people who find、uh, time and who do this on a regular basis,、yeah. at least try to be mindful、uh, during some、Absolutely. other small things that you are doing. 
Right. Uh, something very funny, like uh, Tony Robbins, he used to say that if you don't have 15 minutes, you don't have a life, right? Maybe this is a little bit like, sure, yeah, cool. But now with exactly what you're saying, right, what I learned is that the meditation actually does not end when you get up and leave your house or uh, stand, stand up and go back to your life. But it's the whole day with every, like what you're saying, taking a shower and feeling the water where you are just in your garden taking or looking at your plants mm -hmm. and those moments are all super beautiful mindfulness moments mm -hmm. right so i know for today the one hour we are getting close so i'm going to finish up with a few um closing up questions and there will be more there'll be a part two with um our amazing leader christina so that because i personally have so many more questions I want to ask so how can we make the world a better place for ourselves and for the generations yet to come? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I think that's a very important question. And, you know, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't pretend that uh, we should think about this always. I mean, there are some moments when we are just want to be uh, egoistic, you know, and concentrate on our current needs and um, take rather than give. Uh, right. But I think it's very important that when we have this energy um, of giving, that we actually let ourselves give. And right. it shouldn't always be, you know, too ambitious in my opinion. Like it's not that you can either change the world or do nothing. You can also do some small things. Um, exactly. It's not black and white. It's not like... Yes, yes, so yeah. true. Even mm -hmm. if you like make some person happy for five minutes, I think this is already a big thing to do. Uh, this yes. person may be some, some foreigner, stranger, or your partner, or your parent, or your son, uh, whatever. So I think it's very important yeah. to... Not to be to like start small, giving. start with what's in front of you, right? It's just um, because I my, myself before used to be guilty of this, right? I think about okay, I want to be changing the world, but I I wouldn't clean clean up my house, you know, something like this, right? But when I start getting my house or starting getting with my bedroom in order, and my life it just just become more uh, in order and more flow. Well, that's so, a very important thing. I think it's also like start with yourself. And sometimes if you do right. something good for yourself, like yes. meditation or I don't know, yes. um, just take some time to get relaxed, uh, yeah. that actually will help you be right. more giving to the outside world as well. Yes. So, right. And... Uh, this question actually exactly related with um, what you mentioned about yourself, right? Is there a, like a hack or a trick or certain kind of habits or a routine that you do to maintain your uh, good mood, good vibes or productivity? Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for the question, Jazzy. It I could be would anything. say that uh, my secret is never to stop. And never to refuse um, some new adventure, you know, uh, because right. I think that the time and uh, space are flexible. The more you do, the more you do, actually. Uh, so any yeah. new project, any new um, event, any new adventure actually gives you something that even though it takes your time, it actually always gives you right. more. Um, right. Right. So this is what I'm trying to do, and uh, sometimes I don't real, I don't understand how uh, all the things that I'm doing actually can uh, can be limited by 24 hours per day, but somehow, right. <laughs> somehow, uh, yeah. it fits. And then I imagine you probably work insanely hours too, right? Like maybe, um, uh, would you tell us a little bit on average how many hours you work a day or per week? Oh, la la. Just roughly? Just estimate. Well, I would say almost always. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say mornings are usually more calm because, well, the U.S. market right. is the one that um, has yeah. the most um, 
yeah. events. So I'm usually, I don't know, I'm waking up at around, I'm uh, starting working at eight, nine in the morning. Right. Uh, yeah. But then it's only by three, 4 p.m. my European time yeah. that, uh, right. you know, the the bus is ha- starts happening. That's when like East Coast start getting up. Yes, and, and then um, I'm always like online. Coast even well. even if right. I have some plans for the evening, even if right. I dance, I always have my watch <laughs> with uh, all the notifications. So then um, uh, maybe I'm not working at the computer, but I'm still connected right. and responding to messages, uh, even with the weekends. So right. yeah, I've never counted actually. Well, I would say, well, if you cut out dance time it would be like i don't know 14 hours per day yeah well maybe 12 and some then yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. when you are passionate about what you are doing it's difficult yeah. to divide what is what is work and what is not right i mean when i'm uh, hosting a mentorship panel for women is it work yeah, or not yeah. well it's not directly related to Cointelegraph business but it definitely has implications and this is something that I feel important to do um, being a part of Cointelegraph. Absolutely. So would you tell us, um, tell the audience here, you know, the mentorship program that you are doing so that they can, or even just the name and I'll uh, add the link into the show notes so that they can go check it out. Well, um, tell I us something about I have, that. I'm part of different female organizations. I'm an uh, advisory Amazing. founding member of uh, 100 Women at Davos uh, ah, who are organizing some amazing. wonderful um, events and um, opportunities for women uh, right. who are um, managers or willing to become managers. Um, I've recently participated in different wonderful events one of that that you um attended was organized by oasis protocol um right. a mentorship panel i think that was really a great event and i i hope that they will keep doing what they uh, started um there are also some other interesting organizations related to women. And also within Cointelegraph, we are always trying to um, create more sensibility toward inclusion and diversity topics. Right. And this question, actually, uh, I've been thinking about it for, for a minute. Um, some, your take on the um, cryptocurrency maybe let's like, say like bitcoin or other cryptocurrency when it comes to mining its impact on our planet and how do you see where the future holds with that and, and i'll say we can close up with that and um and then there will be part two everybody so <laughs> stay tuned thank you jazzy well that's a very important and big question of course right? but- especially you are literally the best person to ask because your uh, background is so much time in uh, energy and uh, well, sustainability um well thank you for for thinking like this but in my opinion it's very important actually to always be you know open to other suggestions because it's not that our assumptions are the one that um, the ones that have to be um, like the final truth. Um, I think we are going toward uh, overall decentralization. And I think it's very important that it's used, the technology is used not only for, um, you know, some, let's put it egoistic, but it's totally normal. Um, desires of people to become rich or to have more career opportunities or i don't know to travel more and communicate with the interesting people or to create some cool technological solution for um for a big business and uh get rewards uh, from that business um but i think what what blockchain and cryptocurrencies in general could uh, definitely change is to to create more freedom for people in terms of their financial situation in terms of 
their access to different data in terms of protection of their data, in terms of their trust to uh, different processes that involve uh, big data. Uh, right. And this is where I see a big revolution for um, blockchain applications where right. maybe we can restart trusting in, uh, in some institutions yeah. who yeah. Uh, at some point have lost our trust just because we, are, right. we keep going Absolutely. with the imagined yeah. order that yeah. was created yeah. centuries ago. Well, you mentioned exactly. Florence and Venice. These are two cities where the first yeah. banks appeared like 600 yes. years ago, 500 years ago. And Wait, didn't Medici family, they, they had a bank, right? Yeah, or before, back in the days. Yes. And yeah, then yeah, also yeah, Venetian yeah. Um, right. merchants. Absolutely. Uh, and then literally the Medici family from, obviously from all the political things they do and with the money, then essentially they made a cut to become the first uh, Florentine Pope, which is um, money, the power, and which is, which is the old old days is very interesting, but also something maybe for us to really reflect upon. Yeah, right? because and, it's also a legacy that we, are, we keep using now, even though the reality is yes. totally different. Um, and yeah. I think this blockchain revolution can actually help create new realities for some uh, uh, daily operations that we already consider established as yeah. uh, as the life itself but it's actually not yeah uh, so rethinking the schemes um, and right. uh, rethinking how we approach money in general how we approach right. the concept of wealth, uh, and decentralization yes. of data. These are very interesting yeah. topics, in my opinion, to follow. Absolutely, absolutely. One last question, then I'm going to let you go. Would you have you any thoughts or comments on you know uh, such as Bitcoin? I know Ethereum is shifting to um, different uh, mechanism, but you know when it comes to Bitcoin mining and amount of uh, electricity consume, you know, um, any comments on that? Maybe. Well, that's a big topic, of course, and proof of stake, like moving from proof of work to proof of stake is definitely something yes. that uh, can uh, approach this uh, issue. Uh, yeah. But in regards to Bitcoin, Bitcoin is also developing its technology and it's also developing sources for its mining. So I think uh, right. it's not it's not about Bitcoin itself. It's about us. Right. Uh, who need to shift our minds toward more yes. green, um, uh, well, mind setting. Uh, and yeah. Bitcoin yes. mining could perfectly find use renewables for its um, electricity um, right. consumption. Absolutely. Yeah. Like in China, there are so many, um, the mining farms, if you will, right next to the... Um, like fire power plants or something or like even the kind of water power plants if that's in the right word they use the the leftover energy to uh to do mining but um ladies and gentlemen all the audience out there we're gonna wrap it up this beautiful conversation i have many many more questions that we'll ask who uh would like to ask uh christina but we'll have to wrap it up for now and after today's conversation i realized christina cornet is not only the acting editor in chief at Coin Telegraph that is very uh, doing something extraordinary for the space and for people who want to come into space. But also, she is a passionate person for innovations, for environmental consciousness, and uh, women's rights. So, and also, she has many interesting and beautiful hobbies. So, we're gonna come back and ask her more questions. Um, in a short future and christina thank you so so much for uh, taking the time today and uh, I'm, I'm very very grateful thank you yes. very much jazzy uh, i think it's very important that uh there are so uh enthusiastic young uh, passionate uh people like you so thank you very much for for being um for dare and uh, not being afraid of uh, asking questions, because I think this is very important for us to, you know, enrich our our vision of uh, of everything that is happening around. Thank you very much, and I wish you really good luck with everything. 
Thank you so much. And um, yes, we're going to wrap it up here now. And we're together building a brighter future. And uh, that's it, uh, Christina. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Thank you, Jazzy. Thank you, everyone.